Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, good morning, everybody. Um, so, I'll be um, hosting the uh, webinar today. Um, just to, to give you a, a little bit of information first, um, this is by no means, uh, when, whenever I do presentations like this, they're not fancy designed or anything like that. So, I, I hope that you like um, basic black text on a white background because you're going to see a lot of that. Um, I'm, I also tend to talk quite quickly, so please um, ask me to repeat anything, ask questions, stop me, um, just anything. Um, the chances are we, we won't take the, the, the full allocation of time, so there's plenty of time for you to interrupt me and ask me to repeat something or anything like that. Um, I also just wanted to point out that I'm also aware that um, some of you, uh, what you're offering is, is open source. Um, I will naturally use the word sales a few times, but um, just, of course, this is applicable to all customers. Um, so that's just to, to kind of let you know that, really. I, I am aware of that. Um, so paying or otherwise, it, a lot of this is applicable. Um, so, oh, let's, uh, uh, here we go. So um, how we do, so um, I'll introduce myself properly, uh, a bit of background on, on, on me um, in a minute, and I'll also ask for, for a, a quick introduction from uh, the two of you that are here at the moment as well. Um, then I'll run through a little bit about the, the context of this and what exactly is um, a scalable business, because it's scalable businesses that um, we talk about when looking at internationalization. Um, a bit about why. Um, so we'll cover the, the main points, um, uh, spoiler, spoilers there, but um, the main points such as sales, investment, strategic alliances, market fluctuations, talent, and company um, culture. Um, a bit about the how as well, so the process, that's a vast, vast subject and one that we could probably speak about for a week on a webinar, but I will give you an overview of that and um, we can obviously talk about that um, further afterwards as well. Um, and then some challenges, because as I'm sure you're aware, there's, there's plenty of challenges with this legislation, supply chain, culture. Um, and then um, we'll have time for some Q&A at the end as well. But as I say, do um, ask any questions throughout, do stop me, just shout, ask me to go back, um, whatever. It's, it's not a problem at all. Um, okay, so, um, some introductions. So that's me, first of all. Um, I am British but um, I live in Lisbon um, and I'm currently working for um, Fast Track uh, VC, a venture capital firm. Um, my role here is um, covering their, their EU programs, so Horizon 2020 and things like that. Um, one of those is called Startup Lighthouse, which is all about um, helping startups to scale. Um, I bring a number of startups to Lisbon, introduce them to the ecosystem, things like that. They're, they're startups that are, are scale-ups um, about starting their, their internationalization on the whole. We actually run that both here. Um, we run it in Dublin, uh, Vilnius for covering all of Eastern Europe and, and Berlin as well. Um, my prior experience covers, um, it was primarily events when I was back in the UK and here. Um, but uh, launching again in new territories, um, both in Europe and, and further abroad. Events obviously have their own challenges as well, because it's not just a case of finding a team and things like that, but there's, there's a lot of logistics that go into it. Um, and I'm currently launching my own startup as well. Uh, we are already thinking about internationalization. Um, it's an e-commerce business, so it's relatively simple compared to some others. To, to, to internationalize, but we'll be actually we'll be launching um, in as well as Portugal here, uh, Germany and, and the UK at the same time and have plans for that. So everything I do is kind of thinking on a, a global scale, thinking um, about how things can scale. And um, the reason I chose that photo is actually that was um, from the, the last startup Lighthouse event uh, with a couple of the um, startups that came over looking to, to move to Lisbon. Um, okay, so um, I'd, I'd love to hear from the two of you. So, uh, sorry, I don't know which, um, which pilots we have here. So, have we got anybody from CyberHab here? No? Okay. 
Um, Sports Smart. Oh. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I didn't quite quickly reach the, uh, the button. Yes, uh, my name is Alberto Criado, and we are from Pilot One, which is a cyber hub. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just wondered if you could um, tell me, so obviously I'm not, I'm not directly involved in the project. I work with, uh, with F6S a lot, but I wondered if you could tell me a little bit about um, where you are in your pilot, what, a bit more about what you do, and um, it will give me an idea of kind of where you are in terms of thinking about internationalization, whether it's in the future or, 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 or sooner. Yes, uh, hello. Well, um, see if I can summarize it in... Yeah, in just in quickly, don't worry. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we work with, uh, with the... Um, uh, we're involved in... It's, we're a consultancy company. Uh, we, we work with, uh, with uh, environmental issues, uh, water, and uh, this specific pilot uh, is to do with uh, harmful, harmful algal blooms, halves, uh, the proliferation of uh, toxic microalgae eh, in uh, rivers, lakes, ponds, at sea, uh, in aquaculture uh, facilities. Uh, we uh, uh, have developed uh, this uh, pilot uh, to integrate uh, all variables that uh, affect uh, the proliferation of uh, this microalgae. And uh, we, uh, our business scheme has to do with all the variables and all the, uh, uh, we could call it legs that the project has uh, to predict uh, and to simulate uh, different scenarios so that uh, managers, water uh, authorities and, uh, uh, can use the, the, uh, the application or the, uh, or the, uh, or the cyber hub to, to generate different scenarios uh, and predict the, the evolution and the happening of these uh, harmful arcan blooms. We are biologists, engineers and uh, we work with biological issues and modeling issues. Mm -hmm. And, and where, whereabouts are you, are you based? We are based in Santander, north of Spain. Yep. Uh, if you know, uh, um, although we work in the whole of uh, the country with our uh, little projects, uh, uh, or big projects like this one and others that we have, like life projects, Mm -hmm. And uh, we would like to explore the possibilities of uh, internalization, of course. Okay. Just out of interest, actually, because obviously you work with competence centers as well. Are they also based in Spain or are they based elsewhere, the, the people you're working with? Yeah, sorry, I didn't catch the first uh, question, sorry. sorry. Um, are you working with um, competence centers as well, are you, or a competence center? Um, uh, what are they? What do you mean? Like uh, technology or university? Yes. yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, sure. We, we, we work with, uh, with technological centers, uh, especially with uh, computing, uh, high computing, uh, because this, our pilot demands high computing resources. And yes, we sometimes uh, use the, uh, the uh, knowledge and facilities of, of, of universities mainly. Okay, and or, they... or, or um, it's not universities, but it's also private and public, mixed pa pa private and public places, like okay. uh, Institute of Physics of Cantabria, for example. Okay, and are they based in Spain as well? Yeah. They are, okay, all right, interesting. All right, thank you very much. Um, so that was CyberHab. Do we have anybody from um, Sports Smart? I'll give you a little bit more time to answer this time. No? Um, space weather data service. No, okay. Furniture enterprise analytics. Uh, perhaps it's better just to ask Adam, which project, which pilot are you from? Could you present yourself, please? Uh, hi, uh, Anna Myers is here. I'm from Pilot 4. It's um, a bot mitigation uh, engine system. Okay, all right, great. Um, 
So, um, as Alberto did, um, do, could you tell me a little bit about um, the project and where you're based and who you work with and, and things like that, please? Um, uh, right now, we are at this um, stage where our system is um, ready for testing for customers. Uh, it's early stage um, and we have a few customers which are already testing the systems and we are um, uh, developing it uh, over time to um, uh, introduce new functionalities and, um, and that's it. Um, how, how We're working work? together with PSNC and IDEGO. Uh, so basically IDEGO is, uh, hello, Maciej Hwasp, I'm also from Pilot4. Hi. Uh, so, so Idego is a developer team, and uh, PSNC is our competency uh, center. Okay, great. And, and where are you based? Sorry, You're... we're based in Poland, uh, Gdynia, okay. north of uh, north of Poland. Okay, right. Okay, and have you given any thought to internationalization? You, you're currently just covering Poland, are you, or working with? Uh, uh, yes, basically we are working only with Polish uh, companies, uh, Polish uh, institutes, uh, but we think about internationalization and uh, uh, for us it's uh, the best uh, way, I think, uh, at the moment is uh, going into the marketplace um, uh, of EOC Hub and we are working on that, uh, but uh, we are looking forward uh, for some new options, yes, uh, to, to, to have a bigger impact uh, internationally. Okay, all right, excellent, okay. Um, thank you very much, and I, I think that's everything we, we've got here, isn't it? I, sorry, um, because of how I've got my screen, I, I can't see the um, participants. Yes. But yes, yeah, okay, okay, great. Which is uh, fine because it's being recorded. Yes, yeah, that's, so that's, that's fine. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't leaving anybody out um, of introductions. So great, okay, um, so let's, let's move on to... Um, I've put it context, but kind of what is internationalization? So, I mean, it, it's quite simple, really. It's quite self-explanatory. I was going to say, what do you think it is? But I always think that's a little bit um, uh, kind of a school. So um, internationalization, quite simply, is um, the process of designing product services that can be used in multiple countries. Now, that's if you're obviously thinking of that from the start, which these days most people are. Um, but it's, it, it can also just be seen as the process used by companies who are then looking to expand their global footprint by entering new markets outside the country of their inception or dominance. Um, as I say, so these days, more often than not, it's something that's at the forefront of mind when from inception of the company. Um, but it's not limited to that. Um, some businesses just start up thinking they'll service their own local area and um, uh, as they grow, um, it becomes obvious that they're, they're a scalable business. Um, so um, that can um, obviously um, help them to, to, to take it to the next level. Um, sorry, go back. Um, so um, the, what, when we, that first one, the, the scalable businesses, that's um, what you're thinking of when, you, um, when, when you're putting together a scalable business. But, but why? Um, I mean, who here is already at the, the stage of um, talking to investors, for example, whether actually, whether with this project or has done in the past with, uh, with, with other businesses? Anyone? No? Okay. Well, it, when, you, when you speak to I investors, um, they are always talking about scalable businesses. That's what um, they're, they're interested in. Um, it increase sales in new markets, minimal costs, that's what investors want. It's what's good for a, a, a business as well. Um, they'll just keep repeating scalable to you. Um, kind of working, although I'm not directly involved in the investments in this side of things in, in the VC I work for. Um, it's, it's all about scalable and without that, um, there's, the, the, there's often, a, it, it's difficult to get past that, that first stage with, um, with investors. 
Um, but there's, a, there's also, of course, the, the benefits to the home market as well, which we'll, we'll cover a bit more um, in the next section as we move on to, to why you would want to, to scale a business. Okay. Um, so actually, before we move on to that, so um, I, I, I mentioned some at, at the beginning, um, and sales is the, the obvious one. We've, we've mentioned it already with the um, increase in sales through new multiple markets um, and the minimal, um, minimal investment or in extended cost there. Um, but it, it's basically why you're in business. Um, that's quite a uh, generic or, or it covers um, a, a lot of people. But I, there's, if, if you're in a, a pilot like this, um, if you're you know, in a project like this, that the chances are you're, you're in business um, for either sales or, or customers if you are open source. Um, there's, there's more in the, in the world than there are in the, the local market. It's, it's not difficult to, <laughs> to, to explain. Um, it's, I, I know not all businesses want to scale, which is, which is fine and you know, it's something we, we talk about a lot. There's, um, it, there's no need that you, you, any business should feel it has to scale. But if you're in a project like this, if you're looking for investment, if you're, things like that, I'm assuming in this case that um, you are um, and you want to get your products in, in more people's hands, uh, wh whatever the reason, I suppose. Um, economies of scale, the more you sell, um, you know, this is very basic stuff, but it's, it's also worth repeating. The more you sell, uh, your cost per unit tends to, to, to go down. I know it's not always the case, but um, the vast majority, um, this, is, this is obviously uh, what happens. Um, and you can, um, so you, the more you cut into your, your TAM, so your, your um, total um, available market, you're going to uh, um, increase both your, your, your serviceable and in turn your obtainable market. You're just increasing that um, by increasing uh, the, the number of places um, that you, you can service. Okay. Um, did that kind of make sense? Yeah, is yeah. I, I it's difficult. I'm hoping. yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. Great. Okay, cool. Um, so I just wanted to show you. So this is actually from the um, so an example of, of that. Um, I know again quite self-explanatory, but this is from a pitch deck from from my own startup. Um, it's um, it, it it's it, it it's how we we are attracting ourselves to, to investors, I guess. So we're based in Portugal. Um, we're, this number here is the, it's, I should explain a little bit, it's a, it's a food um, tech company. Um, and we're expecting uh, vegans to be our early adopters. So we, we've got 60,000 vegans in Portugal, um, which worked out annually that, that our, our um, some is somewhere around um, 110,000 a year, which isn't a, an awful lot, of course. So we've looked at other markets. Germany, suddenly it's 1.3 million and comes up to, to 2.5 million um, annual revenues there. Um, at the UK, and there's three and a quarter million, and you're, you're talking about six million. So this is um, to of it display why um, that increase in potential market is is important to, to, to say to investors if you're you're at that stage um, why you want to scale we actually go on and the US has a whole load of problems as well of course because of the, all the legislation and tax which we'll be talking about but we also actually go on to talk about the, the potential to the, the US and from our very first meeting, this startup, for example, is less than two months old. From our very first meeting, we were talking about where this can go and, and things. It's, um, it's important to, uh, when you're thinking about internationalization, to do it as, a, as early as possible. Um, and that's, that's on the sales side of things. Okay. Um, in, in investment, so none of you, 
just um, none of you have had much to do with in investors at the moment, no? Uh, no. Okay. I love no. No. Okay. Um, so investors, uh, for, apart from anything else, they, um, they like to um, know their, their, their local um, or they, they like to invest in the companies that are active in their local market. Um, for example, Portugal, um, I talk about Portugal a lot because that's where I'm based, but Portugal, um, there's, there, there's, a, there's a decent number of, kind of angel level. Um, there's a few VC, then there's a, private equity is quite good, but um, the vast majority of startups over here only really start to scale with investment from um, other countries, uh, the, the UK, um, Germany, even the US. Um, you need to, more often than not, you need to be able to show that you can service that or you, you will be servicing that or, or ideally you are servicing those markets. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule, but investors more often than not um, do like to, to invest in, in companies active in their market. Um, it's, it, it's also, apart from anything else, it's, it's easier to have um, meetings. Um, it's always nicer with investors to, to meet them face to face. They like to meet you face to face as well. Um, rather than having to jump on a plane if you're, you're active in their market, it's usually a, a good reason, another good reason. Um, some countries offer legal protection for investments as well. Um, investment, investors know their, their local rules and they're always going to be uh, more interested in or feel safer investing in, in local companies. Um, their connections. So um, I, coming from a, a, a VC, I, I obviously am probably biased, but I always think that it's not just the um, fundraising that is important from investors. In fact, I often think that, that more than that um, is the connections, their network um, it's, and their expertise. But um, in this sense, the connections in their local market are, can be key um, opening up um, new um, opportunities. Um, they can help you find talent, um, which we'll come on to as well. Um, and it's, it's, it's a really, if, you, if you're getting investment from a, um, a, a VC or, or even an angel um, in another market, it makes sense to be in that market for, to take advantage of those opportunities apart from anything else. Um, it's, it's something I'd, 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 I'd certainly recommend. Um, so strategic alliances, uh, I suppose uh, most of the pilots in here in this program, of course, with your, working with your competence centers, universities, your, your tech companies, you already have them in the local market. Um, but there's, there's lots that can, can come up in the, um, in new markets as well. And that's why I asked at the beginning whether these were um, in, in the same countries as you're based in. Um, often on these projects you see actually they're, they're from, uh, from elsewhere and it, it does open up that. Um, it's, it's a, I'll come on to that as well, it's a, it's a good way to aid the process but um, can share best practice, um, can um, share their technologies um, and their competences as well. Um, and also depending on the um, lines, it could be complementary products and services, perhaps not so relevant to, to you guys here. I don't know, maybe. Um, I don't know whether any of you are already looking at um, potential partners in any other countries already. Uh, no, not in our case at the moment. No, we haven't been looking for any partners yet. Okay, but you, you've obviously been working quite closely um, with others in Spain, so I suppose can 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 see the benefits of that and how they can help in other countries as well. Yes, you're yeah, right. Uh, even with some uh, technological partners and things like that, they're always very helpful because uh, um, of the uh, alliances uh, between the two. Uh, yeah. uh, companies, of course. Okay, great. Um, okay, um, next one, uh, quite a wide term, but uh, not wide, um, 
quite um, a, um, a, a, an overreaching um, term, but um, avoiding market fluctuations. I mean, this is again um, quite simple. It's the the whole thing about um, don't put your egg, all your eggs in one basket. I don't know whether that translates outside Britain or not, but um, <laughs> uh, you can protect your the company against um, economy crashes. So um, again, looking at Portugal a few years ago, there the economy went completely um, belly up, if you like, and um, companies that are active in other markets are obviously more protected to a local economy um, crashing. Um, yeah, and exactly that, to so, uh, avoid the all your eggs in one basket um, syndrome. Um, it's the same, you, you wouldn't um, dedicate um, all your resources um, and everything to, to just one customer um, is exactly the same uh, market. If that customer left you, you'd be in trouble. Exactly the same if everything is in one um, economy that then um, goes through a crisis, um, you're, you're in trouble. Also, do, depending you know, um, on what you're doing, you can take advantage of currently changes. Um, obviously, there's, there's businesses that do this as a sole, um, a sole business. Um, now, it's not necessarily what I'd, I'd recommend for the, the main reason to go into another market. In fact, it's definitely not. Um, but it's certainly something that um, can help. If, for example, um, what, three years ago, you... Um, opened in the UK from uh, the uh, from from uh, within Europe um, it would have cost you an awful lot more than if you're doing it now because thanks to a little thing called brexit that I'm not sure everybody's heard of um, the the pound is so much weaker against the euro that um, it would be uh, the, the last couple of years would have been the uh, a time to, to really take advantage of that from from Europe um, made it a lot easier because the UK we'll see um, used to be quite hit. well it's still expen an expensive market to open in but it, it, it's made a lot more attractive now um, thanks to, to the weak pound um, talent so um, again it's a it, it's one of the things that I'm going to come back to to Portugal just because it's the, the market I know the best but um, there's lots of um, companies that come to, to Lisbon, come to Portugal, Lisbon in particular, um, because um, of the low cost of, especially um, tech and uh, especially uh, data science talent in the, in the city. Um, the university here is rated very highly and because of um, economic problems a few years ago, um, especially youth unemployment was so high that you could pick up talent very, very cheaply. Now, actually, um, minimum wage and things like that over here is still uh, very low compared to lots of um, other European countries. It is getting a bit harder to pick up talent because there's so much demand for it now, although still, once you get it, the, uh, it, it is at low cost. Um, it's a... It's, it's, um, it, it's a, it's a Great thing to, to when we, we look at where, in fact, you know, thinking about what that country can offer you in terms of talent is um, it, it, it is a real real push with the, the startup lighthouse program. Um, one of the main things um, that we use as uh, as an attractive um, reason to come to, to Lisbon, as well as the weather, although it's overcast and it's raining this morning, which is annoying, but generally the weather um, is is the talent available. That's, uh, that's uh, fantastic, really. Um, different countries have different skill sets. Um, so again, you, you look at the tech here um, and tech over in Eastern Europe as well. Um, if you're looking at the US or the, the UK for sales and business development skills, and then um, with, uh, obviously uh, sort of the, you're more, um, wide range of skills in, in somewhere like um, Germany or the Nordics as well, um, which uh, offer different skills. It, it's, it's something that um, is, a, is a real consideration. 
Um, and of course, locals know their market as well. Um, so um, recruiting the, the right people uh, in the new territories um, can, can help you, you grow there as well. Um, okay. Um, the, 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 the final one of the, the main points on this before I'm going to pass it over to, to you slightly, so if you can start thinking of some things, is um, company culture. Um, it's it, it, it's simply a, a nice thing to do as you grow, um, offering travel and opportunities to staff. Um, I've worked in many businesses where um, one of the, the things that the, the company, when they're, they're selling themselves to you, is the, the travel opportunities. Um, it, 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 it's nice. For, for anybody to, to go and um, visit a new city with, with, with a purpose. Um, obviously holidays, great, but when um, you're doing it for work and you're, you're um, achieving something for that and you're being paid to, to, to visit new places, it, 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 it's great for the staff morale. Um, and it also opens up more chances for internal promotion. Although, yes, there's the capturing the talent from new, uh, new markets as you're increasing um, in size, as you're moving into to new countries and new geographies, um, offering kind of relocation and um, uh, promotion opportunities for current staff um, who may have hit a ceiling in your, your, your local market um, is, is, a, is a fantastic um, incentive as well. Um, and you get to increase um, skill sets of your, your current staff as well. This comes back to talent um, as well. So by finding new skill sets of talent in new areas um, that can um, uh, move over onto, uh, onto current staff as well. Um, whether that's quite simply learning from um, the best in other areas or, or even languages and things like that. Um, being able to offer staff the opportunity to, to learn new languages is, is a great incentive as well. Um, so I've, I don't know if, um, because there's just the two of you, if there was anything else that I was gonna pass over for everybody to have a, a bit of a, a think about um, why else um, you may look at internationalization and have a bit of a discussion about that. I know there's just the two of you, so I don't know if either of you have got any thoughts though. Uh, well, uh, ju just a point, uh, yeah. because uh, obviously when you talk about uh, uh, internalization and business uh, and companies, uh, I guess, eh, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, main, mainly also talking about private uh, companies. Uh, and we, for example, in Spain work mainly for the administration, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, water river authorities, that control the water in freshwater reservoirs, rivers, and they are in their own difficult uh, enterprises to approach. Mm -hmm. and, uh, obviously, they are our main clients because they they uh, uh, they have uh, control of all the water bodies in the in the in the, in the country, and obviously. There are some private uh, companies that deal with uh, uh, drinking water, for example, but are the least. And I'm not sure if, if uh, uh, in other countries the system is the same or there are uh, administrative bodies or private companies. So just, just I want to leave with, with you the, this, this uh, point uh, that we are uh, concerned about. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, um, but that's a perfect example. I mean, I, I don't know the, the kind of water business particularly well myself, but um, you said that they're, they're difficult to, to get into the, the, these public bodies and um, it exact, um, so it's uh, this one here, um, the locals that, that know their market, there's that and there's also the, the investment side of things um, with their connections with the local market. Um, by, by, by finding the right people in these new markets there that um, know how to, uh, or either have the connections or, 
or know how to, to get into those um, uh, businesses yet, it, or public bodies, um, it, it comes to that. It's, it, it's, a, it's a prime example, I suppose, of why it's good if you're, um, if you're targeting people like that. It, it's a good idea to actually have some, if you like, bodies on the, on the ground over there, um, even if it's, it, it, it's just a small, even single person um, that knows the local market, um, has absolutely no problems with language, for example, um, knows um, the how to approach these uh, these public bodies. It's yeah, it's a, it, it's a, actually a, an ideal example of, um, a, of a couple of those points, um, and that could be um, investors, or it could be um, it, it could be talent um, that you've recruited, even on kind of contract work. Um, I can imagine they're they're extremely difficult to get into. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else before we we kind of move a little bit onto the process? No. Okay. No problem. Um, so as I I mentioned that like the, the process is huge. Um, it's it's not. It's not particularly um, simple. There's there's an awful lot of variables on each of these. I'm I, I'm doing a, a bit of an overview on this, um, but we can go into far more depth than this, and um, it's something that I'm happy to to talk about afterwards. Um, probably more on a a one to one basis. It, it's better because it it can be so so different for everybody, um, but um, the, the, the basic questions to ask, I suppose, are when, where, and they're, they're the, the first two, when you're ready and, and where to go, and, and then how. And the how especially is a long process, or, no, or not a long process, it's a long process to, to discuss um, far, far more in depth than we've got time for here. But I I'll give a kind of overview of that and um, please, shout at any time if you want me to slow down or um or, or make a point so um when i mean we'll, we'll start with um that it's different for everybody so um it's difficult to answer that question um from from the start for, for a start um for example um an e-commerce company is relatively easy you can internationalize from the the, the start um with or without a, a team there um, so with, with my startup, for example, we, we won't have teams in the other um, territories we're targeting. We'll just focus marketing on, on those areas to start with before probably having something in the UK is the, the idea. Um, so it, it's very easy for, for that, for, for other businesses. Getting into public bodies, for example, it can be a lot more difficult um, when you've got quite a... A, a very targeted um, customer base. Um, so it depends on, on what you need. Do you need staff? Do you need an office? Um, not everybody does. Some people will. I mean, it's, it's unlikely that you're going to need an office straight away as um, people tend to start slowly, but um, we'll get on to, to a bit about that and why it's um, important not to overstretch as well. Um, but um, what, so what do you need to um, there and when, are the, where, when can you, you do that? Because these, these, these cost money. Um, and is the client base there? Uh, is no point um, doing it if um, you're without a, a, a client base and um, already in your, your, your home country um, or the, the countries of your inception and, and launch. You need to, to make sure that everything is in place at the back um, end first. Um, and uh, where, where is, um, is very difficult um, because there's, there's, there's so many options. Um, do you chase money, for example, or do you, do you go for, for ease first of all, ease of entry? Um, it's to start with a short list, um, get a short list down, whether that is based on um, anything really. Um, just, you know, there's how many countries are there in the world? 100, 
62 or whatever countries in the world um, get down the shortlist um, for whatever reason and then bring it down to things like market size. Um, also, is it comparable market to um, the one you're currently in? Is it something that you know the, um, the cost of sales is, is going to be, um, the cost of sales um, will be about, um, uh, about the same. So I was just reading it. Alberto has just had to leave the meeting quickly. Um, we're comparable to, to where you are at the moment. Um, um, is it easy to manage, manage um, legislation, tax? That's different everywhere. Um, are they favorable to you? Do you understand them? Have you got um, contacts that can, can explain them? You know, it's company formation um, requirements are very diff different in um, all sorts of countries. You can start a company over here in Portugal in about an hour for 300 euros. Um, you know, that's very easy. There's other countries where, you know, it's, um, it, it, it's absolutely not. And that's whether it's in the EU or, or not, of course. Um, competitors, um, is it favorable? Are they there? Um, if they're not there, why aren't they there? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's that, that old thing that actually you, you want there to be competitors in your, when you're launching a new business, unless it's a totally brand new idea because, um, they've shown that there, there is a market there. Uh, so are they there, but at the same time, um, is it favorable? Um, investors, again, we've, we've touched on them before. Um, either they, they, they want you to move there um, or because you have more access to them. Um, but um, it's, uh, it, it, it's important to, to see where they are, where those ones you're talking to, where the interest is, is from, if that's your, your reason as well. Um, and also, always ask yourself why you've, you've chosen that market. You know, it's, it, it's all very well. Yeah, I, I'd like to go and live in Italy. So um, let's have a look at Italy. But if that market isn't right, then um, make sure you're, you're, you're going for a reason. Um, but of course, I always um, do think that, um, in fact, uh, quality of life and um, is, is important as well. So actually, there's nothing wrong with looking at a company, a country to, to scale into um, for quality of life reasons, as long as they're, they're, they're ticking the other boxes um, as well. Um, and also make, make sure that um, you've done your financial projections. It's a big decision. Um, um, it's, a, it's a big decision. So um, look at, go back, double check the market size, double check the cost of sale, double check that actually you're, do your, your research into um, whether your, um, your unit costs and things like that are um, acceptable in that market. Um, do, do everything, um, cut down that short list and um, then double check, triple check, quadruple check it. Um, how? Okay, this is the bit that's huge. So before we get onto this again, I'll, I'll ask if there's, there's any questions um, at this stage at all. I know that Alberto has left, so um, is, are there any, any questions? Nope. Okay, no problem. All right, so um, do what we, we've just spoken about. Um, so do your research um, when and why, uh, where and why and, and just why. So um, when are you ready and why, do, why are you ready? Um, where are you going? Why are you going? And, and why? Always have um, that reason that you're, you're, you're going. I said right at the beginning that not all businesses need to be scalable. There, there, there's nothing to say there is. Some people are quite happy and quite rightly happy with their own um, market, their inception market. Um, so make sure that it, 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 it's right for you. Um, is it relying, relying on funding? Um, often that is the case. Um, so uh, you can bootstrap, you can get by with um, 
a bit of pre-seed um, money, friends and family maybe, and um, do, you, do you though then need funding to, to take it to the, the next um, stage? Is that already in place? Um, are kind of KPIs that have been put in front of you for that expansion, are they, um, are they achievable? Um, it's all going back to that, do, doing all your projections. Uh, projections. Um, is your internal communication collaboration going to work? Moving to a new country um, is, um, is a big step. It's not a case of um, you necessarily will be on the same time zones. You might, um, it, it depends how you started, but um, you, you won't all be in the same office, same co-work uh, to start with. Is everything set up? Um, most are these days um, because uh, most of us work um, or can work remotely. Um, we have, everybody's quite used now to um, working with Skype, with Google Drive, with Dropbox and things like that. Is, there, is everything in place though? Um, and uh, make sure it is. Um, and prepare for recruitment. Um, your onboarding process, stay in place, training um, for new staff. Um, who's going to manage that? Is that you? Are you recruiting a country manager or um, local MD or something like that to start with? Um, is that somebody moving across? Is that how are you finding that person? Recruitment is, is key. You have to have the, the right people. Um, and if it is you um, that will be going over to, to do that, um, we'll get onto that in a minute, slightly further down. I should have put it next actually, but um, uh, make sure that the, the, the business is set up to, to run without you. You know, you're not gonna have a, a lot of time. Um, I mean, that's the case anyway, but especially if you're going over and um, launching this. And this, this by the way, this, uh, that, that point um, relates to, to more than just opening an office or opening kind of a, a, um, a team over there. You don't always have to do that. It might be that um, you're going over and um, if, for example, you are talking to, to um, public bodies or something like that, you need to be over there doing it face to face. Um, it doesn't mean you necessarily will have an office over there, but this is also capturing um, international clients as well so you'll be away um, working on that as you're 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 opening in new markets um, obviously um, marketing plan do you need local URLs do you need local social media accounts different languages um, and something we'll come into um, uh, in a bit as well is uh, cultural intelligence um, need to to know what you're doing is not offending anybody or uh, is in the um, it is suitable for, for that market as well. Um, there's more. Um, so I mentioned setting up the business to, to work without you. So covered that one already. Um, also be aware that it's likely to be best to start lean. You know, we're not all um, Google. Um, you're you're likely to to start with. Um, uh, a small team if you are even hiring a team just hire what you need um, make sure it's the right people um, and, and go back to, to kind of the basics with how you, you launched in your own company um, redo your business model um, canvas redo um, all your, your projections and things like that keep keep costs down as, as much as need be as well um, if that means outsourcing outsource um, there comes with its its own um, issues and challenges as well, but um, it can also reduce kind of the uh, the risk as well um, if you're you're outsourcing that work and taking on contractors. Um, and use your support network. So that's um, uh, early customers you might have over there. That's of course investors. Um, it's worth getting to know kind of local incubators and things like that if you're um, it's quite possible you'll you qualify for incubators and accelerators if you're you're opening up new in those uh, markets as well um, and that is a very very
quick and basic overview of, of how. Um, we could go into each of these and probably more um, for half a day each at least. Um, but are there any questions on, on any of those or any other thoughts um, at this stage? No. Okay. No problem. Um, so we we kind of um, we're getting on to um, the the final parts of this now, which is the the challenges. Um, there's endless challenges again. Um, there's there's new ones that come up um, every day. I I'm, I've covered kind of um, three of the the most important ones. Um, and I think the first one legislation is, is quite obvious. We've touched on it already at times, but um, each country has, has, has different rules. Um, and it's often the, the, the biggest challenge as well. You, you hear about even huge companies having, having problems with this. Um, Airbnb and Uber, for example, are, are prime um, for this. They've, they've run into um, many problems with um, legislation, um, various places. So um, uh, Uber, for example, just can't operate in Barcelona anymore. Um, there's, there's a lot of legislation that's come in in many, many countries, uh, many, many cities and, and countries um, regarding um, Airbnb, um, Amsterdam and Lisbon, for example, Lisbon here. Um, they, it's new legislation that came in um, limiting short term lets. Um, on the back of Airbnb, and you, you've got kind of, yeah, it's, it, they're, they're unique cases because um, the, the chances are we won't all be becoming unicorns, but um, it, it's things that, you know, you kind of need to be prepared for as well. Um, so it, it, it is often the, the, the biggest challenge. Um, and that's, that's, again, it's even within the, the um, EU, no, not just kind of, legislation in the separate country, in the individual countries, but um, employment law and things like that, for example, um, it, there's all sorts of things. Maternity leave is, it, it is different everywhere. There's minimums, of course, but um, it's different everywhere. Um, there's um, things on, um, uh, in Portugal, for example, you get paid 14 months salary um, rather than 12. Um, and uh, meal allowance and things like that are all um, necessary. There, there, there's things like that that um, you need to be aware of and it, it again will go back to um, using local knowledge um, whether that is um, outsourced or, or employed. Um, tax implications on both ends um, again you know it's a case of deciding where your, your tax um, is and um, where your, your your official HQ will be in, in things. Um, Dublin um, is, is a prime example of it's got very favourable um, tax um, tax for, for headquarters, which is why um, Facebook, Google, and, and things like that are set up over there. Um, again, it's something that is too complicated not just to explain here, but it's not something that I'm in any way <laughs> qualified to, to talk about tax and things like that. What I can tell you though is that um, it's, it's very necessary to, um, to get experts on board, um, get expert advice on, on all the legislation um, and tax implications um, where you're going. Um, has anybody come into to issues around legislation and tax um, already or I suppose you're, you're just in your, your own countries, it's, it, it's simpler. I mean, it's never simple, but anybody? May I ask, um, of course. who would you go to um, for advice on legislation in a local area? So I, personally, I would simply, um, uh, so if you've got investors in there, investors will will be able to help if you have investors in the local area. If not, I would simply go to um, uh, um, a startup um, specialist lawyers um, or accountants. There's, 
there, there tend to be some. So um, more and more um, law firms, for example, are opening their own startup incubators. And that's where I would go. Um, it's uh, over here, we, we have one called SRS Advogados, who um, they have their own incubator and they um, specialize in offering advice to startups uh, moving into the, the country and, and actually local as well. Um, it, it, it's as simple as that. Uh, that's a case though of, yeah, you probably want to outsource um, depending on the size you're, you're going. But um, have, a, have a look and most countries now will have um, startup specialist lawyers, whether they've got an incubator or not within. Okay, thank you, Tim. There are, of course, there are resources on, online as well, um, or again, for, for each individual country. But um, I personally always think it's better to be speaking with somebody, um, even for myself setting up um, as, a, as even a, a freelancer over here in Portugal was, um, was a challenge. Um, so in the end, I went to an accountant who did it all for me and the, the, the cost was so low um, that it, it, it's much, much, uh, it, it's very, very worthwhile. Um, but uh, yeah, if you, if you don't do it, the fines can be, um, can be big. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so there you go, expert advice, uh, essential. Um, the, the, the other thing, uh, or another thing to, to bear in mind um, is your supply chain, because it can change a lot. This, again, this is probably more relevant to um, those selling a product, but not always. Um, you know, are, are, you, are, you, are you starting from complete scratch or will you be exporting and importing to new country um, what you're already doing? Um, new relationships, if you've um, got an established um, business or it doesn't even need to be that established, but um, you'd have built up relationships within your own supply chain already and the chances are you're going to need to build them again. It again comes back to perhaps you need somebody with local knowledge, um, somebody with uh, fully full language um, for that, that country. I mean, I'm obviously a um, native um, English speaker, with, with, which helps, but there are still um, issues. You know, it, it's 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 not a case that everybody speaks um, English. Although I'm quite lucky that the vast majority of people do. Um, you know, it's it, it's important to to try and get somebody um, who can speak that local language as well to help build those um, relationships. Um, de delivery times, payment dates vary country to country. Um, it, it kind of comes the payment comes a bit to legislation as well about invoicing and things like that. But um, delivery times, for example, um, I'm I'm used to when I lived in London. I was used to next day forty eight hour delivery. That's not the case in um, in Portugal uh, at all. Um, even not just delivery, but even response times and things like that can take a lot longer. And it's something that you need to be aware of how you become aware of that is either from trial and error and, and um, finding out that the hard way, um, but being prepared for it, or um, again, ask people in the, the, the local market, um, asking anybody in Portugal will tell you that actually response times don't tend to be um, quite as, uh, as quick as, as elsewhere. Um, so um, this is one that, um, I think is is very important, and um, that that's culture generally. Um, there's um, cultural intelligence. Um, I, basically, the cultural intelligence is all about um, be, how adaptable you are as a person, really, to um, to new cultures. Exactly that. Um, the, there's, there's countless examples of even um, the biggest companies in the world making mistakes. There's um, whether it's um, 
how you shake a hand, whether it's um, how uh, how you, you you present something. It's it, it, there's endless examples of this, um, and um, I would I would recommend. Um, I'm not usually one for kind of online tests and things like that, but actually taking CQ tests and uh, and sharing them with transparency um, really does um, help you to understand um, how you personally and 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 your your current team and things like that are going to 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 adapt to new cultures and um, approach to new cultures. Um, I sorry. It's a good question there. Somebody suddenly. I was just going to say sorry. What tests was it? CQ. So, uh, CQ tests. Yeah. Um, there's. I was going to actually include um, a, a link to one, but there's so many of them. If it, if you just Google CQ tests, there are a hundred free ones online. Just to that, it's uh, it's all about um, uh, asking you it asking you questions about um, how about your personality and also then um, kind of if you like tests on what you think about these different cultures what, or what is acceptable in these cultures and things like that and it, it, it's very interesting um, it's not it's not one of these kind of bad things that I tend to dislike um, kind of personality tests and things this, this is this is a, a, a real thing um, Harvard Business Review um, have spoken about it quite a lot. There's some good articles on Forbes about it as well. Um, it tends to, and a lot of the findings that come out of um, people taking these and then being able to adapt to new markets aren't necessarily surprising either. You might have um, a star employee, say a salesperson, for example, who's a complete star in your local market, but then they can't adapt. And it's, it, it's often actually... Um, uh, migrants and, uh, and refugees as well who are much better at doing this uh, to uh, um, um, adapting to the these new markets because they they're used to looking at things from the outside um, it's it, it's something that um, I think is really important to know about your own team when you're expanding um, and um, to, to to use it for how best to approach um, other cultures and markets, because that even again, even within Europe, I'm. I think sometimes people automatically will think this is far and wide, but even within Europe, there's there's some huge changes. And I, I would that, so it's a CQ test, um, and share share it with your, your team. Get your teams to to take them and and talk about them openly um, before um, approaching markets um, to know who's best placed to, and who who's most adaptable to things like this. It's, um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Um, and um, so marketing communication and just general communication. Um, the language as in actual language, as in um, uh, whether you, you use the local language, um, whether you use English, whether you use whatever, is that. And then there's also the type of language used as well, of course. Um, Formality in different countries. Um, uh, how it, so again, I'm, I'm coming back to an example of, uh, of Portuguese um, again. But for example, in, in um, Portugal, Portugal, um, it's normal um, translation and things like that. Um, uh, apps and things that you might use tend to translate English into Brazilian Portuguese which of those understandable in Portugal is also very obvious that it's uh, translated from <laughs> English of it um, often because um, it's, uh, it, it's slightly different or actually Hugo can probably say more, but it, it is different from native Portuguese. Um, so it's important again to, to have people um, uh, translating in the proper local language um, if need be. Um, and workplace etiquette, so that's um, looking to simple things like, like dress codes, uh, formalities, uh, how, how formal things are, um, greetings, um, everything uh, around those lines as well. It's, um, it, it, it varies so much that um, it, it's important to, to kind of stay on top of things like that as well. 
Um, I say I'm very passionate about getting that culture right, and um, with that side of things, again, we'd be happy to to talk about that um, further with with anybody. Um, it, it's something that I think is um, often kind of still still these days is still taken as an or just assumed as um, being fine when actually it, 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 it's important to get it, it, it right. Because um, although people are, if you like, forgiving and understanding, um, I think just as a, a sheer respect thing, it's, it, it's important to try and get that right. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the end of that. There is um, a takeaway that um, we'd quite like you to do. I think it's, it's just the one of you online at the moment, but um, I'll, I'll run through that in a, in a moment. But I, I, I first wanted to ask, so over the, the whole thing, um, any questions, any further information you'd like to, to ask or, or anything like that from anybody? Take that as a no, which is which is fine. Um, so what um, we'll, we'll do next is um, I'm going to, um, or one of the, the, the takeaways from this is that I know that um, the project would like you to um, plan out kind of your, your internationalisation um, for the future or, or however. And what I'll do, I, I, I'll share a, um, a, a template with um with the team that to to share with you um so that you have that as kind of an output um Catherine and Hugo will be able to tell you probably a bit a bit more about kind of time frames on that and things because obviously there's there's quite a few of the pilots who haven't attended and will be um listening to the recording of this but um I'll share that and my details are on here as well um if you'd like um to, to follow up with that, I'm I'm happy to um, have kind of a, a, a further conversation with anybody as well. Um, if you wanted to to follow up on on anything, my details are on this presentation. Um, uh, it's actually I, I've included my personal email here, or um, I'm logged in here um, with my uh, VC email as well. So either one is is absolutely fine, and um, I'm, I'd be happy to have a call with anybody. Great, thank you, Tim. That's um, really helpful. Yeah, we'll be sharing a um, plan that everybody can use if they so wish. Um, I think that's all. If there's no questions, we can wrap it up. Um, this video will be available on the EOSC um, DIH website, um, so it will be available for reference. So um, unless there's any questions, I think that's it for now. Thanks all. And we shall be in touch. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, everybody.